Please join in singing our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. celebration of the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I'm Monsignor Mike Heffernan, Vicar General of the Diocese of Peterborough, pastor of Our Lady of Assumption in Otonabi and St. John the Evangelist in Keene. I welcome with me today Father Louis Lapanid, pastor in St. Fenland Falls, St. Aloysius in Fenland Falls. Let us begin in our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our responsorial song, Lord, I love your commands, I love your commands.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those whom God predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And Jesus spoke to the crowds, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Because uh, she was so poor, the parish helped the widow with food and rent money. Her son had immigrated to New York and become very, very successful. And one day the pastor asked Mrs. O'Leary if she ever heard from her son. And proudly the widow answered, 
Bob writes me every week and always encloses a picture. Now thinking he would see some family photos, the pastor asked to see the pictures. And bringing in her Bible, she showed the pastor a Bible stuffed with pictures of Benjamin Franklin. Those are hundred dollar bills in case you missed it. Bob had been trying to help his mother for years and the old woman had failed to realize the treasure she was given every week. Or picture the classic movie scene. A man and a woman rushing toward one another across a field, running with arms outstretched to that moment of embrace, totally unaware of anything else around them. Focus only on the face of the other. Nothing else matters to them but one another. And finally, they reach each other and leap into an embrace. My dear friends, uh, this in a modern analogy is what Jesus is talking about with the treasure in the field and the pearl of great value. Once you find the one thing that has within it all, the meaning of life, you need nothing else. And Jesus teaches us that through the first and the second parables of the treasure and the pearl, God's will and living according to the gospel are the most precious and worthwhile things in heaven and in life. In fact, you give up everything else you have in life in order to hold on to them. And through Jesus and his gospel, we come to know and understand the real meaning of life and the most important thing we must do to secure our eternal salvation. My dear friends, uh, we have heard a lot of sermons over the years about how we need to give up things and stuff in our lives in order to join with Jesus. And you have given up some of them yourself when the scriptures, like the rich young man, hit you like a ton of bricks. Or St. Luke challenges you to give one of your two coats to one who does not have. Yes, my dear friends, giving up things or stuff is a call to simplify life in order to know God's will and to live according to the gospel. The question is, why is it so hard to part with our stuff? Well, 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 perhaps it is because we don't truly believe we have yet found the treasure in the field, the pearl of great value. The kingdom of God remains something we see far off in the distant, a kingdom to come and not a kingdom that is both future and present. Or perhaps it is because we truly don't understand what God is asking us to get rid of in order to enter the kingdom. Now, let us focus a minute 
on what this stuff is that we have to get rid of in order to embrace the kingdom. You know, my friends, if we are going on a trip, we decide what stuff to take based on the conditions at the destination. If it is the beach in summer, we take swim suits, towels, suntan lotion, sandals, and so on and so forth. So if our destination is the kingdom of God, what stuff do we need there? What stuff? Looking into scripture, we have a God of perfect love, right? And the kingdom must reflect our God. So what attributes do we need to gain the kingdom? St. Paul writes that love is patient, that love is kind, that love is forgiving, that love is never angry. If these are the things of the kingdom, then what we have to sell off? What we have to give up in order to buy that field, in order to own that pearl? In order to reach that kingdom, we need to sell off our anger and our lack of kindness and our failure to love and our lack of understanding of others and our jealousy and our fear. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Here we thought God wanted us to give up our money, our house, our car, our stereo, our golf clubs, my, my, my. And all along, all God wanted was for us to give up the parts of ourselves that we don't like anyway. Yes. And the more amazing thing is, we hang unto those very things for dear life. My dear friends, God does not want your new car, period. God wants you instead to give up your prejudices and love other people. God does not want your savings account. God wants you instead to totally and fully forgive anyone who harms you. God does not want your job. God wants you instead to look at every person you see and believe you see Jesus in that person. So, what is truly within us that God wants us to give up in order to join in the kingdom. What is it? I leave it to you to answer the question. God bless. My friends, together let us profess our faith as we say the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Striving to lead lives that bear witness to God's kingdom, let us offer our prayers and petitions to the Father. For the Church of Christ and all who dwell within her, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local civil servants and for all who assist them in their governance, may God grant them wisdom and understanding hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who grieve the loss of a loved one who died from the effects of the coronavirus, may God console them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For us and our communities of families and friends, may God grant us courage and guide our words as we share our faith with those we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, may they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, Hear these prayer, prayers that we voice to you and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn, This Day God Gives Me.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God uh, forever. forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, the true, the powerful working of your grace. These most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life, and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And so let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy, worthy that you should that enter, you enter under, under my, my roof, roof, but only, but only say, say the word, word and my soul, my soul shall, shall be healed. Be healed. I invite you to please enter into our prayer or join us in our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me be separated from you. Please join in singing our communion hymn, Gift of Finest Wheat.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Please join in singing our concluding hymn, Bring Forth the Kingdom. <laughs>